Who's ready for another NBC hit piece? Let's go ahead, let's get some shots of chipped paint and crying babies. How about some of those spooky traffic lights? Okay, you know the drill. Joel Penton here, founder and CEO of LifeWise Academy. And wouldn't you know it, NBC has done three different pieces on our ministry. There was the online article, there's the nightly news piece, and little did we know, I had no idea, MSNBC was working on the longest piece of all, and we got such great feedback from our play-by-play from the nightly news piece. We're going to work through this MSNBC piece play-by-play, and then I'm joined by a couple of our amazing team members here in the studio to chat about it a little bit. So I'll try to go quickly through this thing. I have to confess, uh, when somebody texted me about it and I saw it, I, I didn't know whether to be sad. I didn't know whether to laugh. It really did remind me of a, an SNL skit. Uh, because it was so kind of ridiculous. So let's work through it bit by bit. Before polls closed in Wisconsin's Republican primary election yesterday, Donald Trump stood in a room packed with supporters and promised them retribution. Okay, what are we talking about? Uh, I know that this was supposedly about LifeWise Academy, but I just heard something about Donald Trump. And I believe this is the first time I've ever uttered the name Donald Trump on any of our videos I'm curious what this is going to have to do with LifeWise. Now, he has done this a lot. But this time it wasn't retribution for his four criminal indictments. It wasn't for the half a billion dollars he owes in civil penalties. It wasn't for what he calls political persecution. This time, Trump suggested that President Biden's recognition of Trans Visibility Day on Easter weekend amounted to a persecution of Christians and promised they would see retribution on Election Day. Christian Visibility Day was Trump's poll-closing message in Green Bay. And surprising exactly no one, the presumptive Republican nominee, then won that primary by a landslide. We don't know how much the message of Christian persecution influenced Trump's victory there, but we do know that Trump has managed to turn his Christian followers into politically pious voters, members of the Church of Trump. The Church of Trump. We are now a minute into this video that, according to the title, is going to be about an Ohio Christian group. Um, what could this possibly be about? Those voters are motivated by issues like abortion to put their evangelical hero back in the White House. But that effort has been frustrated by the reality that even in red states like Ohio, Efforts to enshrine the right to abortion into state constitutions have been wildly and consistently successful, largely because of the densely populated deep blue cities in those states. And so turning those cities less blue, maybe even purplish, is now a priority. Okay, so we start with something about Donald Trump, something about the Church of Trump. Now we're talking about abortion laws, deep blue areas still wondering what this could possibly have to do with LifeWise Academy. Cities like Columbus, Ohio, where former Ohio State Buckeyes defensive lineman Joel Penton. Okay, and now we are introduced to the dark Sith Lord photo of me. You know, when NBC came and did this, these interviews, they, they took like 50 photos. They took some by the bus. They took some in this hallway. They took one with me sitting here. I remember the room. It was well lit. Why, why do they have me looking like some sort of uh, villain? This is, this is going to be interesting. Um, so somehow they're going to tie us to this uh, political thing. Let's see how they do it. In 2018, Penton launched a group called LifeWise Academy, which provides off-campus Bible studies to public elementary school students during the school day. It is raising serious questions about the separation of church and state. Penton has expanded his mission to put God back in the public school day, and he credits his newfound motivation to Ohio's victorious abortion ballot measure. When I see what just happened in my state uh, with the new oh. amendment in for Ohio for abortion, um, it is not only incredibly sad, it's also incredibly motivating. It makes uh, us realize with LifeWise, wow, our mission is all the more important. What other hope do we have but to inject the word of God into the hearts of the next generation? We see the fruit of taking it out of uh, a, a few generations, we've got to get it back to the next generation. 
This is where it starts to feel a little bit gross uh, to be used by a national news organization. This whole media thing has been very interesting, how NBC came and I chatted with them for 40 minutes and the questions, just repeat them repeating the same questions over and over and over, feeling like uh, they are they're trying to, I felt like get me to slip up or say something wrong and then to to see this comment I made on a 90 minute podcast when I was responding to a caller from the state of Washington who was calling in to say that they're concerned about what was happening in America and the moral decline in America and how uh, the legalization of prostitution is happening. And, and I was discussing how, um, yes, we, We had some inertia from the foundation of our country, of the biblical foundation, and we're losing that inertia, and things are falling apart. And I I referenced um, this this abortion amendment and and how the only hope for the moral foundation of our country is to pour the Word of God into the lives of students. To see that lifted from context and, and politicized as though LifeWise is about turning blue states or blue areas red, it just feels gross. Penton's LifeWise Academy is currently influencing the minds of public school kids in progressive cities like Columbus. But he wants his Bible studies company to reach every public school in America, which means that blue islands, cities like Tampa and Philadelphia, Las Vegas and Phoenix and Atlanta, Those blue islands in red states and swing states like Florida and Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, they could be swayed by LifeWise. And that, that really could determine what happens at the ballot box. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton went to Columbus, Ohio to learn more. Here, they're going to go into the NBC Nightly News piece that we've already done a, a reaction video to. Again, the link will be in the uh, in the description, and you can watch it there, so we won't go through that bit by bit. Um, but it is just so interesting to hear someone talk about politics like it's the big category. Uh, like, what's most important are these political issues, uh, when in fact, what we're doing, and again, we said repeatedly, we teach the Bible to public school kids. The big category is human heart. The big category is God. Politics is so small compared to that, uh, but they would see, um, they would make out the most important thing in all the world, that being sharing the gospel uh, with with others as some sort of uh, peace on their chessboard, again, just feels gross. LifeWise Academy, an Ohio-based Christian nonprofit, found a legal way to offer Bible lessons to thousands of school children during the school day. Their initial goal was to serve 25 schools by 2025. But by the start of this year, they had already set up chapters in more than 300 schools in a dozen states teaching the gospel gospel to 35,000 public school students during school hours on a weekly basis. I so appreciate them highlighting the rapid growth uh, and expansion of LifeWise Academy. That's a true story. We set the goal to serve 25 schools by 2025. And yes, now in 2024, we're serving over 300 schools across more than a dozen states, more than 30,000 students enrolled. And almost always when we're sharing that with others, that is something to be excited about. That is something to celebrate. That is evidence that this is something parents want. It's something schools want. It's something good. It feels so so strange to hear it talked about in such a foreboding way. Joining me now is Antonia Hilton, NBC News correspondent. Antonia, every time you visit here, I I get a distressing uh, picture of what's happening elsewhere in the country, and this this is this is not any exception. I'm sorry to stress no. you. About- a distressing picture, and then a literal wringing of the hands that. This national news anchor is distressed to learn that there are thousands of students being taught the Bible during school hours. That, I guess, is where we are in this country, that someone on national TV is distressed, is stressed out to learn that kids are studying the Bible during school hours. That is really something to behold really important and essential reporting. And I I just wonder how, first of all, how is it for people who, you know, are a little bit unclear as to how this arrangement works, when and how are these kids being taken out of 
public school and sent to Bible study effectively. Yes, and I'm, I'm sure people want to know too, wait, one more time, how is this legal? Yeah. So LifeWise has the support, frankly, of a number of Supreme Court rulings. Thank you, Antonia. That's exactly right. A couple Supreme Court rulings we have the support of. Thank you for pointing that, that out. Good job. They're able to make this work through three, three things. It has to be optional, so kids have to opt in. You can't have a school district that's forcing everyone to be in LifeWise. It can't be on the school property. So usually LifeWise sets up at a church that's really close by. I mean, the one we went to was about a half a mile ride. It's like nothing. And then, you know, it can't take place when there would be a math or a science class, something seen as essential. So kids are coming out of things like recess or in the case of the students you just saw there, they're leaving their library periods. Well, Antonia, I tell you what, you're doing a great job outlining how clearly black and white legal this program is. You hit three things. Now, you hit two of the major and, and one minor. Let me cover, cover the three major. Yes, off-school property, privately funded and with parental permission. She missed the privately funded part, but then she did throw in one of those minor requirements that it can't be during core curriculum. But I tell you what, she's doing a great job if, Antonia... If you, uh, if things don't work out for you at NBC, we might have a place for you as a spokesperson of sorts. Great job. And in that district, about 50% of the kids are leaving. Wow. So, you know, you're seeing a large portion of, you know, the classmates or friends that you might be with in that section leave at that time. And, and it does have an impact, at least visually, on the school environment. Well, and again, the, the uh, statement of 50% of students got a wow. And uh, hearing that there's such wide participation, normally, the natural response is to say, this must be really good. Students must really like this. This must be having a big impact. And yet, hearing there's so many students learning the Bible is found to be distressing. They're all wearing their red shirts and their popcorn parties that LifeWise is having. And then there are these notes that these kids pass each other about how great and how fun LifeWise is. I mean, I just wonder if this is not running afoul of sort of First Amendment stuff, like whether or not there is not, uh, whether or not there's kind of a gray area. Let me see if I can get this straight. Kids wearing matching shirts might be running afoul of the First Amendment. Kids inviting their friends to come to Bible study might be violating the First Amendment. Kids eating popcorn might be a violation of the First Amendment. I may need to go look up the First Amendment again because I have become completely lost that may be further explored by people who find this questionable in terms of the subject. I talked... I got to pause it right there to say uh, her little phrase about this may be further explored by those out there as the CEO of this organization and now seeing more and more activity online, more and more people uh, contacting us and, and digging in. Uh, it's hard not to view what she just said. It's hard not to hear it as some sort of call to action to a particular audience. Again, LifeWise, by and large, is not controversial. Uh, communities welcome it with open arms, huge participation, huge welcoming, and occasionally there's a very small but vocal minority who simply don't like Bible education, and they certainly don't like it during school hours. It's hard to not hear those words as a, a uh, call to action to that small group out there about that gray area with the administrator at the school district to say, how are you walking this tightrope? Yeah. You know, are you worried about lawsuits? Is this a stress for you? And he acknowledged they are walking a very fine line here. Schools can't encourage or establish a religion. Yeah. But they also can't stop kids from expressing their faith. And so... Antonia... Well done. That's exactly right. And if I recall from the interview uh, where that administrator was interviewed, he said, we neither encourage nor discourage participation. It isn't a gray area. It is very clear. Students can participate if they want, but they don't have to. It's entirely optional. With these instruction policies, these released time religious instruction policies is what you see at the district level here and states like Ohio have allowed their schools to do this. It means that once those policies are in place, school districts kind of have to put their hands up and allow programs like, like 
It's interesting to hear her say that once a school district puts a policy in place, they then have to put their hands up and use the policy that they put into place. Of course, they're going to use a policy. They're the ones who put it into place. And again, this is that manufactured controversy, making it sound like uh, everyone's having trouble with this, when the fact is, when we go to a school, 93% of the time, we're welcome in, welcomed in. We survey school administrators every year, the most recent survey, more than three quarters of surveyed administrators, public school administrators, uh, that have LifeWise serving their school said LifeWise benefits their school and students. So this is clearly a positive thing that's being uh, twisted in this report. Wise. And other groups could do this too. It's just that LifeWise seems to have kind of figured out the, yeah, the, the, the franchise here. model. Yeah. yeah. But they are supposed to, without encouraging or discouraging it, allow the kids to go and then to come back. The trouble comes when we talk to people in these communities, parents and observers who are getting concerned about LifeWise. They tell us that that all sounds fine, but in practice, it's messier than that. Yeah. They have seen administrators hand out paperwork and flyers about LifeWise. In one school district in Ohio, uh, a tutor gave a Hindu student information about LifeWise. And that's interpreted by a lot of parents, even Christian parents. I mean, kids who with kids who go to Sunday school yeah. and are part of this community, they're getting uncomfortable and they feel like there is this kind of encroachment happening that even if it all looks clean on paper, isn't how it actually functions. Again, fascinating. I'm wondering who these parents are. I'm wonder wondering where these parents are. And I'm wondering who believes that a tutor handing a piece of paper uh, to a student uh, is encroachment of some sort. Um, so again, controversy manufactured ground and isn't that sort of the point of LifeWise? i mean we had that sound from the the founder saying you know he he got particularly motivated by o ohio's you know enshrining of abortion rights and there there is the like, politics is a part of this right it's not just to spread the gospel there is an end to this there is an there is a goal here at the end of the day and ma'am that is your assertion whereas our assertion repeatedly is that it is not about politics. Uh, I understand that someone may have a worldview that the most important thing to them is politics and everything else must serve the God of politics. However, we are Christians. What's most important to us is God and his word. And we, that's all we want to do. We want to share the word of God with students. Another blurry line, right? Yeah. Because LifeWise itself is not a political organization. These are elementary school students. In my observations, I haven't seen them talk about politics or tell... Antonia, come into our defense. What can I say? You're hired. ...kids to vote a particular way, of yeah. course. But when you see who they associate with you do start to raise questions, right? So LifeWise last summer had a teacher summit and Patriot Mobile, a group that many of your viewers would be familiar yes, with because we've yes. talked about it a few times. They are a openly far-right Christian organization that supported and funded uh, this event. Did you hear that? Breaking news. A Christian organization helped to fund a LifeWise event. It is true. We confess a Christian organization it was one of our sponsors for a teacher training. We had several sponsors, a local restaurant, local uh, car dealership, local financial advisors. We also had uh, Patriot Mobile, which, as she said, is a Christian company, Christian organization that sponsored the event. We are so grateful to have thousands of supporters of all sorts, from all walks of life, all over the country, supporting this work. Then you see uh, Joel Penton, the founder, go on a program. And it's, you know, you start to see that kind of political association. Yes. yes, I went on a program. I've been on many programs. And in fact, I'm willing to go on programs even as political as NBC. And I'm happy to go on whatever platform uh, will be given to be able to share the LifeWise story about kids being able to receive Bible education during school hours and uh, to chat a little bit more about this report and uh, to hear what the real story is. I'm joined by two of my most favorite people in the whole world. We have our citywide director, Mr. Vincent Coleman, the legend, as well as our teacher support manager, Miss Christina Romer. Welcome, you guys. Hello, hello. 
How about this MSNBC national news? Christina, I'll start with you. That organization you just heard about, did that sound anything like the or- <laughs> the organization we serve every day? I tell you what, no, it really didn't. They made it sound so messy and that we're willy-nilly with passing out invitations left and right and having popcorn parties that spill over into the school and those types of things. And that is just false as incorrect. Well, um, tell me about that. Yeah, they did say it gets messy. When it gets to the details, uh, then trouble comes. Like, you were a teacher. Correct. One of our first LifeWise teachers. Mm-hmm. You currently live in, uh, and you taught in, one of the most highly religiously diverse, mm-hmm. uh, most affluent communities that would just be uh, primed for all sorts of controversy. Uh, did you see a bunch of messiness? Like, tell us what what that was like. No, it really wasn't messy. And I'll tell you... Um The teachers, we are trained to be professional. We are professional. So the way that we operate is professional and that goes, that's top to bottom. And so um, as far as um, our students passing out invitations, really it just depends program to program, school to school district to school district. Um, We we definitely work within the parameters um, with the school. And so if birthday invitations are not being passed around at school, we certainly uh, do not pass around LifeWise invitations at school. um, but there are some some districts that say students um, feel free to pass out invitations, these invitations at recess or on the bus, and so we we definitely adhere to to those things. So yeah, it, we definitely are professional in how we go about these incentives or um, or or any of the things that were discussed within the piece. Yeah, so we function within Correct. the policies that already exist within the school, yeah. and so perhaps there might be one parent somewhere that simply doesn't like their school's policies, but I'm not sure what that has to do with LifeWise. We're always functioning within the policies of the school. Vincent, my brother, you were there. So you were interviewed by NBC for the uh, article. For the article. And we kind of had a feeling how this would go. Um, And so we asked, would you please interview Vince for the nightly news piece? Would you please have him on camera? Because we thought that you would give such a great perspective of how LifeWise is working out in the inner cities. And in their words, these not really ours, but in these blue areas right. uh, to illustrate the impact. Um, tell me, what was that like for you? You were there that day. We were hopeful they would interview you. They chose not to. What was it like to listen and see kind of all the interview and all that unfold? You know, I go in and I listen to the nature of the questions that they're asking. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with what we do every day. You know, I mean, uh, they're asking questions about um abortion and they're asking questions about, you know, our views on different types of issues. And it's like, what does that have to do with teaching kids the Bible? Right. And that to me was just, you know, it was interesting. It was certainly interesting. Definitely. I knew, I mean, you know, angles, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, well, why wouldn't you, I, you know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but, uh, you know, maybe you wanted to paint a picture of LifeWise as a certain type of organization, and I may not have fit that narrative. Mm. So I, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. So as you hear MSNBC talk about our ministry, you can get the idea that maybe LifeWise is just this kind of ragtag group. Anybody can show up and put on a t-shirt, and then you're teaching kids, whereas we know the level of experience required, the level of training, and I think, Christina, as a leader among teachers, just your experience and your training, maybe share a bit about that, as well as what you know of some of our other teachers. Sure. Well, I... um... Yeah, come from the teaching background. I was a public uh, education uh, major teacher. I am certified 7 through 12, currently is still a licensed Ohio teacher, 7 through 12 in English, got my reading specialist degree so that I could also do intervention and enrichment uh, with language arts. So um, I definitely, and I also was a director of children's ministry for a while as well. So marrying the two was um, just a, a delight to be able to be a LifeWise teacher. Like myself, we have a lot of retired teachers, re- retired um, public education teachers from 
from a lot of different backgrounds. We have a lot of um, teachers who simply resigned for whatever reason to raise their family um, or what have you. So we definitely have a lot of very qualified professional teachers uh, that are in the LifeWise classroom. We also have um, a lot of teachers that have a ton of experience uh, that are in the LifeWise classroom. We have a certification course. Our teacher certification course takes all of our teachers through um, the background of our policies, all of our safety measures that we have in place. All of our teachers are background checked um, and they go through a role playing experience where we assess um, all of their knowledge and make sure that they are fit for the LifeWise classroom. So professionalism is of utmost importance in our LifeWise classrooms. Well, and they have you leading the charge um, as the manager over all of that. And so um, we know they are well equipped. And Vincent, you have a background in education. You are a former middle school principal for Columbus City Schools, and you are interacting on a weekly basis with educators. Um, I have expressed my great disappointment in NBC for politicizing the whole thing and never talking about the impact, the right. results, and you get to see that. You get to interact with principals. Um, and in fact, I know of one in particular who has seen extreme results, maybe mm -hmm. from a perspective of a former educator and one who interacts with educators. Tell us about some of the impact that LifeWise is having. We get a lot of uh, just great feedback, especially, you know, and, and I know this happens all across, you know, so I... I think one of the things that I love about, you know, what I do, I get a chance to go across communities, rural, suburban and urban. Uh, and it's pretty much the same. But uh, I know one principal in particular, um, it's our largest program uh, in Columbus City. And she just commented in terms of how uh, on the days that LifeWise uh, students are uh, attending at about 93 or higher percent, mm. uh, their goal was always to be above 90 percent. But on the days of LifeWise, kids are coming. Mm. Um, and then also uh, students that are participating um, that have been behavior problems, she's seeing a reduction in their behavior issues. Mm. Um, I know a lot of good feedback that I get from teachers uh, is that, you know, they notice that the culture is changing within the classroom. They're not having to, um, you know, get on kids about be negative behaviors, different types of things like that. And that supports the research that we have. Mm -hmm. So across the board, whether it be in a rural community or urban community or in a suburban community, we're seeing the same results because our kids just are taking to the character development within the, uh, within the lessons. You mentioned the word culture and... Uh, as NBC, MSNBC pointed out, and we know oftentimes we'll have huge participation numbers, you know, upwards of 50% of the entire school. And we really do see the culture of the school changing. You know, we, it, it's no longer weird for kids to talk about Jesus. It's no longer weird to take your Bible to school. Um, and part of me wonders if it's kind of that magnitude of how many kids are being reached how fast this thing is growing, that some people, for whatever reason, that makes them nervous. My question, you heard the anchor say they were distressed. Hmm. Um, what, what do you think they're afraid of? Vince, what do you think MSNBC is afraid of when it comes to a Bible education program for elementary school students? Hmm. And I, I hate to say it this way, but are they afraid of uh, young people that haven't been able to uh, be heard, having a voice hmm. of being able to speak to a caring adult about a situation that might cause them crisis? And now they get the help that they need and can get back on track with learning. Are they afraid of uh, a kid that may have food insecurity needs that may not be able to say anything to teachers in the classroom, but it comes out in a prayer request and now a church can respond to the needs of a, a young person. Or maybe they're afraid of a young person who has been contemplating suicide, but being able to check in with an adult in a LifeWise program and getting the help and support that they need. And now what could be a devastating situation to a, a school is turned around by a kid just getting the help and the support that they need. This is where this ridiculous piece exactly. moves from it being laughable 
to it being upsetting because those things are happening. Yeah. Daily. The, across daily the board. kids are being impacted. And the school you cited who reached out to say that yes, they struggle with chronic absenteeism, but the days life wise is there. Right. They always hit their number, right. their attendance number. And yes, they struggle with behavioral issues, but it's dropped by fifty percent with the kids who attend LifeWise, yeah. and that that would be shoved aside to talk about the Church of Trump <laughs> or some foolishness. Like, that's where it becomes upsetting. Uh, at the same time, it's hard for me to not conclude that there are some people who do not like the Bible. Mm. Mm -hmm. There are some people who do not want kids to have access to scripture. And when you start to hear things like, oh, kids will get a piece of candy. Oh, they might get popcorn. Oh, they're wearing the same colored shirts. It makes me wonder if people can hear themselves mm. talk. Um, and it makes me wonder, in fact, it's hard to not conclude that now they're just grasping for anything. Right. that will shut down a Bible education program, and sadly, a program that's having measurable, obvious, positive results. Right. So I'm grateful for you guys. I'm grateful that no matter what people in a studio somewhere do, um, that we get to link arms and uh, labor side by side in this great mission. So thanks. Finally, all parents have the option for their children to study the Bible during school hours. To voice your support, visit lifewise.org. Find your school, sign your local community interest list, and share it with everyone you know. It only takes 50 signatures to get started.